Let's switch our attention to our major focus tonight, which is what Mr. Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, said today. It is about President Bola Tinubu. He said he should come clean and tell Nigerians and is Nigerian of this embarrassment about the true identity and the qualification of the president. I'm being joined tonight by one person that is very close to the president, the National Secretary of the APC, Senator Basiru Ajibala. He joins us live here in our studio. Thank you so much indeed, Senator, for joining, for, uh, joining us tonight. Yeah, good evening, Sue. Appreciate it. You are close to the president. I mean, you've been with him. You have been his follower for a while. Why all these controversies about his person, about his record, about his past, about his identity? What can you tell us? What I can tell you is that uh, it's unfortunate that uh, Mr. Peter will be allow the seeming uh, trauma that has affected Mr. Atiku Abubakar to also affect him too. And uh, I would say that uh, perhaps there will be need for our school of uh, psychiatry to begin to look at what could be traumatizing some people after electoral loss. Uh, for somebody to spill the kind of rubbish with respect that I say it advisedly that Mr. will be I mean, spew in this uh, press conference today, telling somebody who had been a senator of Federal Republic of Nigeria, chairman, Senate committee on appropriation, somebody who had rose in his professional career to be treasurer of Mobile, somebody who had ruled the uh, most prosperous I mean, state in Nigeria, Lagos State, somebody who contested a uh, presidential election and won I mean, close to 8.9 million votes to be talking about his identity, I think is preposterous. It shows I mean, the la kind of mentality and the kind of uh, I mean, shallowness of the perspective and understanding of Mr. Peter Obi and his co-travelers, particularly Atiku Abubakar or Siddiq Abubakar, whatever I will may call him. So for somebody to rise to the level in corporate world, mobile, and then you are talking about his identity being shrouded in mystery. If there's any mystery at all, I think the mystery is in the brain and possibly in the traumatizing effect of the electoral loss on Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar. Uh, those are strong words, uh, yes, Senator. I, yes, because and when you, you begin to ask... You, you are a, you're a senator. You've been a senator, a national secretary of the party. You know not to use some words against some high-profile Nigerians who may be offensive. If somebody decides to be offensive to the number one city of Nigeria, it does not deserve any other words what is except the offense? offensive. In asking, yeah. Come, if I ask that. you, Sinwaki Baloye, as young as you are, and then because you contested an election and won an election, and somebody is saying you should come clean about your identity, it is argumentum ad hominem. That is argument ad absurdum. You are really live to the level of absurdity. Don't so you it's think, also, so Senator, what I think. Senator, you have a PhD in law, right? Yes. I know that you went to. Uh, your first degree was probably uh, in, 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 West, in, in Lagos, right? You studied law. And, uh, I mean, these are some of the things that are known to a few people. But if anybody questions you, what would you do? Would you make it public? Because if you have contested, and if you have made yourself available to public contest and public life, is, should there be a problem it's in no, declaring no, <laughs> your identity to people if she, they she, are asking she, questions? She, there is no problem. People are asking questions, they're asking with respect. I don't like using some expression. The questions are very stupid. Stupid in the sense that in the context on which they're asking that question, they're asking it in the context that they even are the one that want to bring our country to a problem. I don't know whether you have looked at the websites of uh, a BBC today. The, uh, their team of three investigators, they investigated the alleged an issue of psychic forgery, and they came with forensic analysis of what transpired in the misadventure of Atiku, Atiku Abubaka in the CSU. What are the findings? The register of the school admitted that Mr. Bola Tinubu, Mr. Bola Tinubu, not Miss or Miss Bola Tinubu, attended Chicago State University. For any decent human being, I think that put paid to the issue. There were also evidence from Chicago State University that there were different I mean, formats for which diplomas are issued. And as far as the American system of education is concerned, they don't place premium on, I mean, what they call diploma, which is corporate certificate. They actually place premium on transcript. And they release also the transcript of Mr. Bola Ben Tinubu. And they also said in testimony, under the position, that the person they are referring to is none other person than the person who is sitting as the president of the government of Nigeria. What does any reasonable individual who is not, I mean, afflicted by a malady of electoral loss, I mean, will say and come to a conclusion. So if at all there is a, a doubt, there's controversy, it's self-contrived, ill-motivated, 
ill-advised, and of course, it's a journey just, I mean, to continue to lie to their supporter. The election has been won, I mean, and lost, and this is the first time in Nigeria, Shion, that people are now talking about election being manipulated. They are not talking about results, I mean, being written without any ballot in support of The other thing that, first, the first, I mean, talk about 25% uh, uh, threshold in FCT, and now they are dropping that one now. They talk about the so-called, I mean, forfeiture in the United States of America, they've dropped that one. Now they are talking about the fact that somebody graduated. You are alleging me, Ajibola Bashiru, that I will forge my LLM, PhD, and BSc, and you have asked me to answer you. I will not answer you. I will just look at you that you are just, I mean, wasting your time. So for him to say, what is he saying today? The president should come and address the country. Somebody who had the mandate of the Nigerian people. I think they are descending into the arena. And I think it is high time that the Attorney General and the Federation should begin to look whether their act does not even come, uh, do not amount to treason. Yes, you have by to know the question. By questioning, uh, by asking the president, uh, their own president, the number one citizen of the country, and you are attributing it to treason it by is, saying it that, is, it is, come and tell us these case, controversies a prima a, case that have not treason. been established in, in court so, about the identity so, of the so, president. So, and so, I'd like to ask so, you. What they are also even doing, let me tell you something, what they are also doing is also, I mean, subjudice. Before Mr. Atiku approached the court with his application for fresh evidence, he first address the public. Why do you need to address the public? If you want to uh, adduce further evidence, adduce further evidence. Then to be lying, claiming that you are doing this for the purpose of Nigeria. Even the litany of lies of both Atiku Abubakar and uh, uh, Peter Obi on the issue of morality and the issue of integrity is come to, to doubt. This is a person, that, uh, Peter Obi, that was a governor for eight years, did not conduct local government election, and is talking about constitutional democracy. This was Atiku Abubakar, that the question of PTDF is still uh, shrouded in controversy. There are issues about how the privatization policy has been done. He has not replied to the very damaging remarks made by President Obasanjo John in my watch about his character, about his attitude, and about his, uh, about his integrity in governance. I expect that somebody who plays a premium on integrity on morality and governance should have President Obasanjo in court. Let's if he get, did, let's he has get distracted. Let's focus hide. on the fact of the matter tonight. And it is about the identity and the profile and the records of President Bola Tinubu, which has been called to question. By and I asked, you, I asked a question, Senator, mm -hmm. that if you, that you say you have a PhD in law, is been questioned, you are running for president, what would you do simply? I will not answer such people. Maybe my supporters can answer them. I would think that they are being, I mean, very stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to use that word on national television. For somebody who rose to be treasurer of movement. So you are thinking that the president should not answer he has no basis, Nigerians who are asking Which one? They are not Nigerian. They are litigants. They want to go to court. They have gone to Supreme let we go decide you are aware that. About they are not ordinary the, Nigeria. Are you aware about the dovetailing effect, what this has caused, uh, the traumatic effect of some of these arguments and debates outside of Nigeria to some Nigerians <laughs> whose credentials and uh, qualifications have not been Nobody, you see, Chicago State University has not said Mr. Bola Benz would attend university. What they are saying, when they went to Chicago, the misadventure of Chicago, let us Nigeria know, was to show that Mr. Bola Tinubu did not attend Chicago State University. Also to show that if anybody attended Chicago University, it's a female. When those have now failed, you know, the argument they are saying is that, that the font and the character of the certificate has differed. That uh, there was one font in 19, 1990, there was one font in 2000. For me, the issue is, did Bola Tinubu, was he a student at Chicago University? Two of his classmates, one of them, who contested student election with him, deposed to an affidavit, and yet you're asking him to seek your identity. What I think is done, and happily enough, in a matter of weeks, the Supreme Court will decide on their election I and mean, a petition. They are just saying, I mean, these things because they are bad losers. Elections are won and lost at the ballot. I contested the election in 2023. I lost. I did not have to, I mean, go into banalism. I did not have to scandalize, I mean, anybody. I did not even go to approach the tribunal. So there should be man enough, be democratic enough that election are won and lost at the ballot and not on the basis of, I mean, reading, raising baseless allegations that even, I mean, our students in kindergarten will be asking questions. Let me ask you, since you're close to the president, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Um, what is the official age of the president? The year he was born, do you know? I, I, was, um, I was born in 1972, so I wouldn't know when he was born. So you can possibly I mean, look at his record, which was not an issue. Chicago University, they mentioned the date of his birth in that record. So I was not born then. 
So I can only give I can only give, dates. I can only give you hearsay evidence as to the date of somebody who is older than me. It would be what that somebody told me Bola Tinubu was born on so on, on so so date. And as a lawyer, I don't engage in such I mean kind of uh, hearsay, I mean evidence. So I imagine that because you're close to him, you might have a, you might be privy as a leader of the APC, some of these issues will have come to your table. And as a lawyer, perhaps you are you are privy to it because he submitted all of this credential by the authentication or authorization of your party. And there are issues about 1952, 1954. But let me ask he you. He contested again. an election. This Just one. remember. Just remember you you are a very you're an ardent follower of late Ghanifa Oemi? I'm not his follower. We are in the struggle together. I yeah. don't follow you. I don't have any, anybody I follow. I well, respect someone him. that you respect very well. Yeah. Yes, I respect the practice him. of law. No, Are you are aware of his own uh, 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 debate and his own, uh, uh, the question that he raised about Mr. Bolatinobu. You know, people also raise questions about uh, Ghanifa Oemi too. Ephesus Kayamo raised also issues about, I mean, uh, Ghanifa Oemi himself. So Ghanifa Oemi is not a saint. Ghanifa Emi is not, I mean, fallible. We're and not even talking issues, about Ghanifa Emi. Even the issue that Ghanifa Emi raised, the what he raised, what, the what, issue Ghanifa Emi raised, he raised, he raised at that point in time. I think we must be able to remember. And to be quite clear, Omi, who filled the form at that particular point in time in 1999, own up that he made, I mean, error in filling the form for Ashwa Ibala He even went personally, he's still alive, to meet uh, Ghanifa Emi. But Ghanifa Emi, I mean, still related in public what he discussed with him in private. He litigated the matter up to the Supreme Court and nothing came out of it. Mm -hmm. So if a matter had been litigated 1999 to 2000, since that time, he contested in 2003 and won the election. He contested in 2023. Then after you lose at the uh, election in February 25, you are raising the issue. There are so many issues people can raise. But the question is that the fact that Ghanifa Emi raised the issue was able to establish it in law court. Law court deal with concrete controversies. Let me ask you, do you know or can you tell us the primary school and secondary school of President Balatinobu that I, he attended? I would like to know. You are a party leader. It's not, it's not your party. Let me, let me give you, let me give you, let me now tell you, let me tell you publicly. Who I, submits? I attended a, 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 a primary school in Oshubo, Salvation Army Primary School. I gave a copy of this, my certificate to my stepmother and I've not seen a copy of it to today. So are you going to say that because I cannot lay hands on the copy of my primary school certificate, I did not attend primary school? Is that the case I, with the president? I'm just, telling, I'm just giving you an analogy of circumstances that could occur. So on the issue of primary school, it's not an issue in the election. What they are saying is that they have gone on a misadventure, wasting their ill-gotten money in, in, with their lawyers in the uh, United States to seek to establish that Bolat Ametinubu did not go to Chicago State University. The registrar said, yes, he attended. He was one of our brilliant I mean, students. And I think decent people should apologize to Nigerians for, I mean, believing, uh, for, for trying to seek Nigerians to believe that our president did not attend Chicago State University. Senator, what records were submitted by the president uh, to your party that was submitted to INEC? The only, you the only required, uh, of course, you don't expect me to be the record. The record that was submitted was not even an issue in any of these contests we are talking about. And I said it, go and pick the copy of the petitions, both by Atiku Abubakar and also uh, uh, Peter Obi. They are not raising issues about this thing. They are only raising it for uh, the unsuspecting members mm. of the public. I read Atiku's petition. Mm. Paragraph 146 of his petition only said that the president, that's the second respondent, was not qualified to a contest because he did not meet constitutional threshold. They did not specify what are the constitutional threshold they did not specify the issue of uh, age you are talking about. They did not raise the issue of a certificate. They did not raise any issue. It was after the uh, petitions had been filed, mm. responses had been raised, at the level of reply. They did not even raise this issue of Chicago State University. They are only raising the issue of dual citizenship. And the Court of Appeals said, you cannot amend your petition after it had been filed. So there is no legal anger upon which all these, I mean, uh, irrelevant up. arguments could we be are, could We be just have up. 30 seconds to go. And I know, uh, surely, that so being in office, uh, especially the IS office in the land, which is the, the presidency, is not only by legality, it's also there are moral grounds. The issue of legitimacy of office is also there. The questions about those who feel that there, are, there is a moral burden on the president to be able to clear the air do you think that a president, for the sake of those who think that 
there is a dent or a, a, a sort of illegitimacy drawn into some of these controversies. The president might be able to speak to Nigeria <laughs> about this the, issue. The, the, the Do you think? The president is busy dealing with serious matters rather than irreverent comments and the argument at Opsodom by losers and perennial losers at elections. So I wouldn't, I mean, dignify such people with a response, and I wouldn't want the president, I wouldn't advise him to even, I mean, think a bit about responding to them. If they want answer, let them go to court. They have approached the court, and the court will answer them. That's the response of your party in, in this matter. That's how your party sees this. Of course, that is what a reasonable person will see it. They are losers at election, and they are suffering from trauma of the loss of the election. You don't think that it will be seen as a sort of arrogance? Of course, anybody can say anything arrogant. They don't respond to argument at absurdum. They have reduced their level to the level of absurdity that no reasonable person will bother to be responding to them again. Those are sorry, strong words that you are using for some eminent Nigerians who have legitimate reasons to uh, be, debate this matter. But thank you so much indeed, Senator Ajibala Basiru, National Secretary of the APC. Thank you so much indeed for your time. Yeah, no, nice being here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.